nice issue was important not because we are here, but because it was the first show which the artists put together. Mm -hmm. And it was only prior to it, the Armory show, much earlier. Right. And, and I think it has this importance, as in my view, as the Armory show had at that time. Um, because the curators and the gallery people, they, they didn't care for what we were doing. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Conrad, I, I am curious, but worth it, but did anybody review it? Yeah, I think it was reviewed by the Art News. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think I, Tom has reviewed it. Yeah, yeah. The other thing was, huh? Stu was anything sold? Stuart Preston <laughs> reviewed it. Nothing I don't think so. <laughs> well, if it had sold, it would have been a commercial show. No. You don't want it to be a commercial show. <laughs> they were well, weren't no. they up for sale? No, My they were up for sale, sale. but nobody expected to sell anything. Oh, of course That not. was the difference between then and now. There was a purity <coughs> in the air. <laughs> no yeah, sell. Right. In fact, I remember when some artist once said he sold a painting, maybe to Leo Castelli, for $50. And then he came in a week later and he said, you know, I sold another painting. We all looked at him and we said, boy, is he getting commercial? <laughs> was there a scent of corruption when the Nine Feet show was taken over by... Uh, the stable gallery? No. Was there a kind of a... Not then, no. Because actually the stable gallery, because the stable gallery did the show, it made it easier for the thing to continue. Because if it hadn't been for a gallery uptown New York, with the proper space, making catalogs, and having a staff to look after it, so it stayed for a month, it didn't have to have us go there and clean up the place and look at it and finance yeah. it. It yeah. went on. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it... Uh, Every year it got better because more people joined the show, and the show got bigger and it was more representative. But there was still a lot no of painting, which really I felt, being a young pup hanging around to see the bar and, and listening to these guys, there was a sheer love of painting, which I think never existed before. And not tainted by commercialism. Right, and the joy of painting. painting, the joy of painting and the camaraderie and the discussions we had about, and the fights we had about painting, and listening to these guys, I thought it was wonderful. A lot of that and that's what we were young, though. America, especially, that quality that was born and lived for a very short period, four or five years of that period, where it was not touched by commercial gain, by publicity, <coughs> right, by fame, right. and that we must consider that the artist in America was a reject of society. In America, there was no hope. So that period, the artist was going for broke. He had no hope of making money. There was no hope of doing anything. So he said, then I'm going to be free. I'm going to really paint what I love. Let's see what it is. Yeah. And that's why the abstract expressionist movement could find a route here, because there was no hope anyway. Whether he painted right. a sailboat or whether he painted a landscape, he wouldn't have sold it. <laughs> what can you say? We were there, and Ninth Street was there. And then we did the show. And hopefully, we thought we were going to have a, a nice show. It turned out all right.